Hi. This is a look at the use of enthalpy cycles to determine heats of reaction. And, and first of all, a few thoughts about the uh, idea. First of all, it's a very European idea. I didn't come across this until I instructed IB, and it's not often taught in, in North America. But in essence, what it is, it's a diagrammatic representation of Hess's law. And you might recall the concept or the idea behind Hess's law is that the heat for a reaction is independent of its path. So long as you start and finish in the same place or start and finish at the same locations, then how you get there doesn't affect the heat of the reaction. So for instance, if I want to determine the heat for A to B, I can arrive there directly as shown in the blue, or I can travel from A to C followed by C to B. And then Hess's law states that the heat for these two reactions would be identical because we start and finished in the same place at A and at B. Let's take this now and look at a, a chemical example. And in particular, I'm going to use some heats of combustion data from your IV data booklet. So I want to convert the chemical ethene into the chemical ethane. As I said, we'll look at using heats of combustion to do this. If I burn the chemical ethene, I'll arrive at carbon dioxide and water. And the heat associated with that particular reaction is negative 11 11, negative 1411 kilojoules. That I'll put on my diagram. Similarly, I'll take a look at burning hydrogen. It's negative 286 kilojoules. And lastly, I'll look at the combustion of ethane. And that uh, indicates somewhere around negative 1561 kilojoules. Now I'll spend a moment and just balance the equation. Ethene has two carbons in it, so I'll produce two carbon dioxides. The hydrogen gas plus the four hydrogens in ethene produce six hydrogens or three water molecules. Similarly, if I burn the chemical ethane, I would also arrive at two carbon dioxides and three water molecules. Now my starting and finishing positions are shown in the blue. I would like to figure out the heat for that reaction. In order to do that, I would like to travel first of all from ethene down to the combustion products and then back up to ethane. I can see that my final arrow is not pointing in the right direction. I need to reverse that arrow to complete the cycle and finish at the same place. If I do that, I must also flip the heat term. What was once an exothermic reaction now becomes an endothermic reaction or positive 1561 kilojoules. Now my cycle is complete. So I can take the blue heat, and that must equal the sum of the individual steps of the reaction to arrive there. Now, I'd like to address the, the balancing of oxygen, if I could. Uh, the combustion of ethene requires three oxygen molecules, and the combustion of hydrogen, half an oxygen molecule, or for a total of three and a half oxygens. The combustion of ethane also requires three and a half oxygens. However, remember that I reversed that reaction, so I don't add three and a half, but subtract three and a half oxygens. That now completes the enthalpy cycle then for this example. We'll take a look at another example, um, this time using heats of formation data. In this case, I want to burn the chemical methane. As I said, we'll consult heats of formation data. You might recall that the heat of formation is the heat associated with making a compound from its elements at standard state. So carbon, hydrogen gas, and oxygen gas are all involved in this reaction. I've located the chemical methane, and from there I can see it's negative 74 kilojoules to make it from its elements, and I placed that on the diagram. To make the oxygen gas from oxygen gas isn't listed, but there's no heat associated with that reaction. To make carbon dioxide, negative 393 kilojoules. And lastly, to make H2O liquid, and there's two molecules of it, two times negative 286 kilojoules. I'll pause and balance uh, this equation at this point. Um, I'm going to require two hydrogen gases and two oxygen gases and one carbon um, in my red equation to balance them. 
Again, I take a look at my blue reaction. That's the one I want to accomplish. And I can see that my reactants, um, the arrows leading to my reactants, need to be reversed in order to proceed to the final position over on the product side. So those first two arrows need to be reversed. And as a result, their heats also need to be reversed. Now my cycle is complete. So I can determine delta H for the blue reaction by following the steps in the red. I hope that this has made uh, the use of enthalpy cycles a little bit more clear for you.